What's up guys, in this video we are going to talk about something similar to haters. Not quite haters, not people who are outright hating on you in a very overt way, but this is more like people who are generally in your personal life, not always, but generally in your personal life and they might be what's called a naysayer, who is somebody who appears on the surface to be supportive, but really secretly they're kind of jealous of you trying to improve yourself or change your life and they're kind of casually sabotaging you with their, um, you know, their attitude and what they say. Okay, so we're going to talk about that right now. But first, if you've not subscribed to my channel, subscribe. Why not? You know, why wouldn't you? Uh, I try to make videos every single day. Lately, I've been on a streak <laughs> of like, hello, <laughs> cool people. Been on a streak, like 50 something videos, gonna keep it going. Let's see if I can do it for a year. You know, 360 videos, 365 days. Honestly, I don't think it'll be really a problem because all I have to do is just talk to the camera and then upload and write a description, make a thumbnail. I don't know, it's kind of a lot of work, but I don't have a real job, so. It's not really. Also, this video was brought to you by legendarysuitjamas.com. They make silk pajamas that look like suits exactly like this one that I am wearing right now. So if you want to check those out, link in the description, head over there, maybe buy one, I don't know. Okay, so what was this video about? Naysayers. All right, now what is a naysayer and how is that different than a hater? <sighs> a hater is somebody who, when you say something or when you talk about something that you want to do, they'll come right out and they'll fight you about it and they'll say, oh, that's a stupid idea, you're a stupid person, you should feel bad about having that opinion and about wanting to do that thing or doing that thing and, you know, I'm against you in a very open way. Okay, what's a naysayer though? A naysayer is generally somebody in your personal life who won't really come out and aggressively, <clears throat> won't really aggressively say something bad about what you're doing like they won't be that direct about it, but what they will do, like let's take weight loss for example, okay, that's an easy one, this is a weight loss channel. <sighs> let's say you go and you tell people I wanna lose weight, I wanna get in shape, I wanna get ripped, I wanna be a model, like whatever it is, okay? You have some people who will just come out and say, oh, that's stupid, what, you wanna be a model? Oh, there's already so many models. You know, what, you're too old to be a model, you're, you know, whatever, not tall enough, like whatever the excuse is. Okay? That's a hater, right? And really, I mentioned this in the last video, but really what haters are not talking to you, they're talking to themselves, okay? Because they're actively, or I guess unconsciously considering what you've said and thinking to themselves, well, I couldn't do that. And because I couldn't do it, either that means there's something wrong with me or there's something wrong with the idea. And they're attacking the idea, that's a hater, right? A naysayer, is somebody who will just kind of like casually sabotage you by poking holes in your tires when you're trying to you know drive towards your destination so why do I say that these are generally people in your personal life because these are people that have the ability to poke holes in your tires let's again let's say you're trying to lose weight let's say you know you want to fast you're doing a 48 hour fast or something and you are invited, you know, your mom or your sister or your friend or even even your spouse offers you a bite of their pizza or, and they're just being polite, right? They're just being polite. Or they invite you to some social event or where there's going to be, you know, alcohol or whatever. That's a naysayer, okay? Somebody who says, oh, you know, you're working so hard. Why don't you just enjoy yourself? All right, now actually, now that I think about it, there's kind of a, a not cliche term, but a colloquial term in the fitness world called a Gaines Goblin, right? Now, Gaines Goblin, this is like, I guess, in the bodybuilding world, a Gaines Goblin is somebody who will steal your gains, your muscular gains, right? Now, this is generally like people, you know, are Gaines Goblins, obviously, but video games could be a Gaines Goblin. And actually, now that I think about it, it's normally people will say that girls are Gaines Goblins. Like, when you get a girlfriend, I don't know about you guys, but every time I've had a girlfriend, I've always been in worse shape than when I've been single. Because, you know, girls don't care. Like, again, not to offend any ladies here, but do girls really need to be, like, in peak physical condition? Not really. Like, they're girls. You know, they're going to have guys coming after them regardless, essentially, of what they look like. So, you know, she doesn't want to eat raw meat with 
I don't know, what else do I eat? She doesn't want to eat raw meat every night, <laughs> or ever, really. She doesn't want to eat liver. She doesn't want to eat canned mackerel with peanuts, you know? She wants to like cook this nice little dish and like put a little garnish on it. And she wants to eat something different every night. Um, and she, you know, when you, uh, and okay, you can't only blame the girl, right? Speaking again from personal experience, when I'm hanging out with a girl, who's my girlfriend, let's say, in periods where I've had a girlfriend, I want to, you know, you want to go get ice cream together and you want to, you want to eat things that will make the other person happy. Like, I think it's kind of funny, as much as I talk shit about eating unhealthy food and how I say it's poison and it's bad, every time that I am, you know, somewhere where I want to make a good impression on people or I want to kind of get the people that I don't know very well on my side, I'll buy them some chocolate or I'll buy them a box of cookies or a box of ice cream bars. Like this last hostel that I was staying at a few weeks ago, just for no reason, I would always just kind of, maybe every two days, I'd walk in there with a box of ice cream bars, like, you know, the vanilla ones with like a little bit of chocolate around it. I'd walk in there, I'd buy them for maybe three bucks in the store for six of them. And I would just give them to the staff and I would eat one, right? And like, you'd be surprised how far you can get on a smile and a couple ice cream bars, right? People will open doors for you that you would never be able to talk your way into and you would never, never be able to buy your way into just by giving them a gift that will give them some kind of momentary pleasure when it touches their tongue, okay? So that aside, fuck, what was I talking about? I'm so out of it. I don't have my usual like verbal fluency when I'm, when I'm sick like this, oh, it's awful. I've, act, ugh, I've actually done like six videos like this where I just like get off on a ramble and stop in the middle. But okay, all right, let's focus. Um, naysayers. So, getting back on track. Regarding naysayers, you have to be careful, okay? Gaines goblins, your family, they're gonna try and get you off track. They're gonna try and subtly sabotage you. And if you're not careful, then you might fall prey to it. Now, of course, if you do this in a calculated way, if you plan ahead of time, like when I was living in New York, uh, I, was, I had a lot of Jewish friends, and every Friday night, I would try and go for a Shabbat dinner somewhere. Because in New York, there's a massive Jewish scene, and it's very common for like young, I guess I'm still considered young, young single Jewish people in New York to kind of all get together, have a meal, and it's kind of like a meat market, I guess you could say. So I would go to these things and you don't really have too much control over the type of food that would be there. And I don't know if you guys have met any, let's call them conservative Jews, right? Not religious per se, but also not, I don't know, not judging anybody, but like barely Jewish, like maybe their parents are Jewish, but they grew up like with a Christmas tree, um, kind of in the middle, okay? These people are not like the fittest, most in shape, care about what they eat type of people. In fact, I would say it's pretty rare that I would meet anybody like that there. So anyway, the point is that you don't really have any control over the food you eat. And when you're doing OMAD and you're waiting till like eight o'clock at night to eat some food, you're gonna pig out on a ton of stuff that's not healthy. However, I knew this ahead of time going into it and I knew that I would fast on Sunday or I would fast on Monday and I would kind of, you know, deprive myself to make up for this cheat meal that I would have. So instead of my friends turning into naysayers, I was kind of nipping it in the bud. And, um, you know, you, you kind of take the rug out from under them. Not that they were trying to like sabotage me, they're my friends, they want to invite me to something that they knew I wanted to go to, okay? And also, I'm a fit person, I'm not like obsessively trying to control my weight, because I work out a lot and I, you know, I know what I'm doing, okay? But for you, this is a new habit that you're trying to start then you got to keep that in mind that the people in your life who you might participate in activities with might kind of try to turn the tables on you because they feel bad that you're not participating in those activities with them anymore one more example that's I probably shouldn't say but god actually this is really bad now that I think about doing this like I have some friends you know growing up in LA uh, I'm from this part of town called Pacific Palisades and it's right between Santa Monica and Malibu, and it's kind of like a nicer area. A lot of celebrities buy homes there and stuff, and I had a lot of friends that would go to rehab. 
because, you know, rich white kids and not really the suburbs, but essentially rich white kids are going to do a lot of drugs and get in trouble. So I would have all these friends that went to rehab. And back in the day when I was younger, I used to smoke a lot of weed. I don't really smoke anymore, but back in the day, I was kind of a little bit more reckless than I am now. Anyway, every time I would see one of my friends that got out of rehab, I like, I don't know, I would just, I would be like, hey, you want to smoke a bowl, you know? And now that I think about it, like I probably was responsible for some of their relapses, which sucks. Now, you know, I obviously if I could turn back the clock and, and undo that, I would. Although, you know, I guess you could say they were going to relapse anyway. And like, what does it matter if it was me or somebody else? But uh, still, you know, why, why did it have to be me? It didn't have to be me. Okay, so anyway, the point of my little rant is that just be conscious of the fact that the people in your personal life, your friends, your family, they might not be on your side, even though they think they are, they might want to keep you down, unfortunately. It's very sad to think about that, but it's true. So. You can only look out for yourself. You're the only one on your own team. Maybe, I guess you could say, you can make an argument for your mom. If, you know, I think my mom's on my team. Um, I don't think she really tries to pull me down. But like, for example, all right, last thing, <laughs> and then I'm done. You know, when I was uh, in my like early 20s, I dropped out of college and I didn't want to go back. I thought it was stupid and a waste of time. And I had these other things that I wanted to do and my entire family was pushing me to go back to school. You know, but I, I had all these other things that I wanted to do. Did I necessarily succeed with them? No. And can I really blame them for wanting me to do the thing that they thought in their mind was safe, which is getting back into college and getting a degree and blah, blah, blah? No, I can't, I can't blame them for that. But in my mind, I felt like they were sabotaging this goal that I had. Okay, so that's it. That is my thing about naysayers. If you have people in your life who might be doing that to you, just keep an eye out for them. Don't react negatively to them because they probably do want the best for you, but they just feel bad that you might be changing without them. And that means that they are bad people, kind of. So just keep that in mind. Uh, raise them to your level. Don't sink back down to their level. Cool. Subscribe to my channel. Check out Legendary Suit Jamas. Link in the description. Peace.